This is the polyether imid lecture for thermoplastic resins. Um, I'm going to talk about things like polyimid and polyether imid kind of interchangeably, but there is a distinction. Uh, so I'll make that distinction for you. Here we are again with the sulfur and oxygen containing thermoplastic slide. We are on number three, polyether imid or PEI. And here's our structure slide. So we've gone over polyphenylene sulfide, polysulfone. Now we are, we are on polyether imid. And this uh, actually does show a polyether imid. So this is an imid group right here. Uh, this particular group right here, so the nitrogen that is bonded to two oxygens, kind of like an anhydride. But there's an oxygen somewhere in the backbone as well. Uh, you'll often hear polyimids and polyether imids being used interchangeably. Uh, polyimids may or may not have this oxygen in the backbone. And I'll show you some structures uh, where they don't. Uh, but polyether imids are really the ones that are used commercially because they have a little bit of flexibility, which makes their uh, pro make them a little bit more easy to process. This is a specialty thermoplastic. It has a very high strength to weight ratio. It has very, very high thermal oxidative stability, excellent mechanical properties, and it's most often used in the aerospace industry because of these properties. There are two main types, polyimids. There's a thermoplastic, which is Altem. It's called a pseudo-thermoplastic uh, because it's really, really hard to soften, but you can soften it, therefore it is recyclable. And then there's a thermoset. Uh, thermosets, by definition, set upon curing and therefore are non-resoftenable. And the Kapton is the thermoset type of polyether image. So again, Altem is the thermoplastic, Kapton is the thermoset. If you have a good feeling that I'll be asking you this on a quiz or an exam, you'd be right. This is an imid. This is an imid group. Now, R is just a generic group. Could be anything on either side of this. Uh, but these, this nitrogen at attached to a carbon that is double bonded, this is the characteristic imid group. Uh, two carbonyls uh, in arrangement, kind of like a dianhydride ring. And the nitrogen comes from a diamine reactant. Typically, in polyimids, your R and your R prime are aromatic groups, and that's what gives it the high temperature properties and the high thermal oxidative stability. This is a general reaction scheme, very general. So you have a dianhydride, so remember R could be anything, R1 is anything. Uh, you create this amic acid intermediate, so this opens up this ring and adds here. Uh, you heat it up to close this ring, and you get this imid product. Uh, so you get this particular uh, structure, which is the imid structure and you have water as a byproduct. So this is a condensation reaction. This is a family of polymers, so you have lots of different possible structures. And polyether imids and polyimids are both part of the polyimid family. But polyether imids always have an oxygen somewhere here in the backbone. So why would you do both? You need thermooxidative stability, right? Eh, yeah, right. But uh, here's the problem. When it comes to polyimids, the TGs are very high. Now this is just the temperature at which you get molecular motion, not melt, not flow. So again, you need it to be well above 262, 326, or 365, well, well above that to get any flow, and therefore the ability to process that. That's kind of a problem, but if you put this oxygen in the backbone, you get a lot of more flexibility in the molecule itself, which reduces the TG. And you can produce ones that have a TG all the way down to 236. Now that's still really, really high, crazy high for a thermoplastic, but it makes it able to process reasonably. So typically with a polyether imid, the highest you get with that is 285 in terms of its TG. Here is a fun and color-coded slide just for you. So it's called polyether imid because it has a ether group, shown here in red, shown here in red, and an imid group, shown here in blue. And this is the Ultem type. Uh, so this is the premier thermoplastic polyimid, and it's produced by General Electric under the name Ultem. It was invented in 1982. Now, since I was alive in 1982, I consider this to be a really young and vibrant thermoplastic, uh, but that's just really to make myself feel better, better about my advanced age. But uh, this kind of gives you some feeling for uh, the pace at which the plastics industry innovates. So this is, you know, uh, it's, it's less than 40 years old. And there's a lot of other materials where the technology has been around for millennia, let alone centuries. And so this is a material that was developed uh, less than 50 years ago and is now replacing metals. 
So it's super exciting for nerds like me. So uh, it is amorphous and therefore it is transparent. It has relatively, it has probably moderate density. Uh, and in this case, it's TG is 215. And so unlike some of the really stiff polyimids, this particular polyether imid can be melted and molded at a more reasonable temperature. It has excellent thermal stability, high strength, and high modulus. It also has really high cost, $4 a pound to $24 a pound, depending on whether you're at basic or specialty grade. But it does have a wide range of applications, usually for the aerospace industry. Now I'm gonna show you a couple synthesis routes. Uh, so I'm not really gonna require you to remember these, but uh, once again, bisphenol A shows up. Why is bisphenol A used so much? Well, it's a commodity chemical, it's inexpensive. Also, a phthalic anhydride, which is shown here, uh, is also a commodity chemical, so it's, it's uh, inexpensive. So um, you can create this particular uh, monomer from it. Uh, now, this is a multi-step process. It's also a very energy intensive process. So even though you start with commodity chemicals, it gets expensive fast uh, in terms of its ability to uh, process and make the monomers. So you get a really big uh, tetracarboxylid dianhydride monomer here. Uh, and then you can isolate and purify that. Then you react it with this dianhydride to make a uh, polyether imid. Uh, so once again, you get this amic acid intermediate, you heat it up uh, to close the rings, and you get the one altem route. Uh, this process, heating things up to close the ring and remove water, is very, very energy intensive. I've done that process before. It takes a long time and a lot of heat and energy pumped in. This is another synthesis route. So in this case, you're creating your macromonomer from phthalic anhydride in your diamine. So you get this particular one, and then you react it with bisphenol A down here. So you end up getting this particular structure. So This is a self-condensing ultem. Uh, in, in, in other words, this is an AB type monomer. Uh, you can, it's, and I'm showing you this lovely electron pushing and all that great stuff, but trust me, I don't expect you to, re to remember that. Um, you can functionalize this differently to get different uh, reaction rates. Typically, uh, this gives you the best reaction rate when you have this particular group down here. So you can see here, this is this one relative to four, relative to 37. So when you use the self-condensing monomers, typically this has this nitroso group common here. Honestly, the first route that was discussed, Altem Route 1, gives the best results. Uh, it gives better yields, and the, di the tetracarboxylid dianhydride is very stable, whereas the other ones are more difficult. Uh, this is the way that Altem polyether emitter is usually synthesized in production from commodity chemicals that are very inexpensive and easy to work with and purify the monomer. So this is the thermal setting version, Kapton. Uh, it's often done with uh, films or coatings, uh, and this is very resistant to chemicals. Now, it is thermosetting, which means it cross-links and can't be reprocessed. Uh, it has a very strong brown-orange color, which you can see here. Uh, and that's because you have these electron-rich diamines and electron-poor dianhydride units. Once again, that's just, uh, you know, chemistry speak uh, for a chromophore, something that creates uh, color. So there's many, many different ways you can make Kapton, uh, but again, these are uh, thermosetting, so they're not the kinds that you would be processing in traditional thermoplastic processing equipment. The reason you would choose Kapton is you can, be, you can use it continuously at uh, 300 Celsius with no issues, and you can use it for a short period of time at 450 Celsius with no issues. So uh, that's why you would choose uh, the thermoset versus the thermoplastic. Again, this is the Kapton synthesis. Once again, you have a dianhydride and a diamine with an amic acid intermediate. You heat it up to remove that mole of water and close the ring to get Kapton, TM by DuPont. When it comes to the properties of polyimids, uh, they allow a polymer to be used in place of metal because of the properties. Very high strength and rigidity, uh, up to 37,000 PSI if you're using a carbon-filled grade. Uh, flexural properties up to 45,000 PSI. Uh, good dimensional stability. This doesn't have a lot of ductility, so not a lot of elongation, uh, but very minimal low mold shrinkage and very low linear thermal expansion. Also, you're looking at something that is considered self-extinguishing. So here we are, uh, polyether imid, polyimid, 
uh, are both considered self-extinguishing along the same lines of polyphenylene sulfide. So uh, when you compare that to other things like uh, polyphenylene oxide, so even flame retardant grade or nylon flame retardant grade, it's much, much higher. And it meets the FAA requirements for aircraft interiors. I personally like it when my aircraft interiors don't burst into flames, and I have a feeling that probably a lot of other people do too. Uh, its heat distortion temperature is anywhere from 200 to 210. So again, that's excellent heat and flame resistance. This has very good low voltage electrical insulating properties, but so does polyethylene. The only reason you're using polyimide is because you need that high heat resistance or dimensional stability. This has very good UV res resistance and weatherability. It can be gamma radiated, which means it can be sterilized or used in, say, true uh, uh, spacecraft era, um, uh, applications. So there's a lot of radiation in space, so it can withstand that gamma radiation. And it retains 94% of its strength after 400 millirads of cobalt irradiation, which is pretty impressive. It has very good chemical resistance, but it is susceptible to aromatic and halogenated solvents. Uh, it has low moisture absorptivity. Um, one neat thing about this is that it retains 85% of its tensile strength after 10,000 hours of boiling water immersion. Yes, someone's hook, polyether imid, measured it beforehand and then measured it after 10,000 hours of boiling water immersion. That's very, very impressive um, in terms of its stability. Uh, but that being said, it still needs to be dried for about three to four hours uh, immediately prior to processing at at least 140 degrees Celsius. Unlike polyimids, polyether imid is processable. Uh, polyether imid has lower TGs and therefore can actually melt and flow, which is necessary for injection molding, extrusion, thermal forming, or compression molding. The melt temperature can be up to 430 degrees Celsius. Again, that's really high, and your mold temperature often has to be kept high as well. It is machinable by laser, water jet, and conventional methods. When you're making film that can be made by melt extrusion or solvent casting, uh, you can make polyether imid fire, fiber by melt extrusion or spinning. And when it comes to bonding of polyether imid, they can be used by fuse bonding, ultrasonic bonding, solvent bonding, or adhesive bonding. The idea of my uh, airplane being uh, held together by glue is not necessarily a settling one, but at least it will not burst into flames. So I feel, I feel good when I see rivets, but I'm, I kind of like vintage stuff. So, But you can solvent bond this, and they do in fact solvent bond uh, PEI for aerospace methods. This is used for transportation applications widely, uh, under the hood components for temperature sensors and lamp sockets. Uh, the Ford Taurus uh, uses a polyether imid engine and air temperature sensor. Also used for fuel system components, jet engine components, low smoke sheeting for aircraft interiors because it is tough, dimensionally stable, chemical resistant, has a high heat deformation temperature, uh, has better comparable cost than say using the same metal or a different uh, more expensive thermoplastic. It reduces weight significantly and it has the ability to create one part whereas before you had to have three or four metal parts that had to be attached to one another. Uh, this is often used for medical applications like surgical instrument handles, enclosures, trays, and staplers, things that have to be reused but that have to be sterilized. These can also uh, be used for non-implant prostheses, so artificial limb replacement and teeth. It's also used for neb nebulizer components for administering oxygen and other gases, and that is because it can be sterilized by pretty much any method that you would use in the medical field. So steam autoclaving, ethylene oxide, hot air, gamma radiation, or cold chemical. It can withstand all of that stuff and still come out on the other side just fine. This is used for electrical and electronic applications, so uh, radomes, connectors, printed circuit boards, bobbins, and explosion-proof containers. It is also used for industrial applications like fluing, fluid handling for chemical and corrosion resistance, thread fasteners, mechanical couplers, high burst strength vessels, and fuel filter housing. So again, explosion-proof containers and high burst strength vessels. Very strong, uh, has good impact resistance. Once again, not a whole lot of microwave cookware that's made from plastic anymore, but uh, it, polyether imid has been used to make it. It's also used in steam and curling irons, uh, dual purpose trays for microwave and oven cooking, uh, and it meets FDA requirements when it is co-extruded with polycarbonate uh, for high heat stability, warpage prevention, non-stick properties, and enhan enhanced impact strength at negative four Celsius. That is typically the temperature of your freezer. There's a lot of specialty applications as well. 
uh, precision molded computer disks, fiber optic components, carbon reinforced fishing wheels, reels, sorry, uh, and those have got to be expensive, <laughs> lightweight and flame resistant structural panels. They make firefighters helmets out of a uh, polyetheramid polycarbonate blend. So this is Altem LTX 300B, and this provides both impact resistance and flame resistance. So here are some polyether imid uh, and polyimid applications. So here we have a uh, pump housing. This is a, a filter housing, circuit board, uh, some tape, things like that. And you can see on all of these things it has that deep red-orange color because of the aromatic rings and the structure within them. And thus concludes polyether imid. Moving on to polyether ether ketone.